Well, tonight I'm out here near Canyonlands National Park, and uh, it's a beautiful, clear night. Uh, no clouds, no wind. Perfect night for some astrophotography. And my main goal tonight really is to make the best of the weather and just shoot Milky Way images from about midnight till probably 4.35 a.m. Uh, it's going to be a long night, but I've already had a lot of success doing uh, anything from 4 minutes at 24 millimeters, even 35 millimeters. Uh, and I just finished a nebula photo using my 7200. So that actually just finished up. Why don't I just take it along right now and we'll see what it looks like. And here's my setup. You can see I got my uh, intervalometer and this nice little uh, koozie <laughs> so it's not flapping around. Attached to my D750 with the Tamron 7200 on here right now. And I'm using the Sky Guider Pro. So basically, if you're not familiar with star trackers, really, what you want to do is aim it so it's facing to the North Star, which, of course, you can't see. This is a cell phone video. But once it's aimed at the North Star, it's going to rotate the camera around at the same speed as the stars and essentially allow you to shoot very long shutter speeds uh, without any motion blur. So now that the photo is finished, why don't we see how well it came out? And the 14 millimeter shot just finished up, so why don't we take a look here on the back and. Uh, Yeah, there we go. So that's a four minute shot without star trails, which is pretty amazing uh, if you're used to only doing 20 or 30 second images. So a lot of fun with the uh, Sky Guider Pro in this case. And this is pretty much the new moon here. So um, I'm gonna be out here, like I said, from about 12 a.m. till four or five a.m. shooting Milky Way photos. And uh, this might be one of my last times to do this in a really dark sky location for a while uh, with these perfect weather conditions. So. Uh, with that said, I'm going to get back to work, and I'll catch you guys tomorrow. This is the first stormy day we've had here outside Moab, so I figured I'd go for a little drive here to Castle Valley, and uh, all the wildflowers are in bloom. It's really nice. so. I think I'm going to head up towards Castleton Tower there, and uh, we'll see how the view is. Now, the weather has changed pretty considerably. It got really nice and sunny for a while after all that rain. Uh, and another plus is that my car looks brand new. It was pretty dusty this whole trip, but that rain really pelted it off, and it looks like it just got out of the car wash, so that's great. And I think I'm just going to spend the night here in Castle Valley. It's really quiet compared to Arches and Canyonlands and all that. Uh, they had their outdoor vehicle rally this week, so everything was pretty jam-packed. So it's nice to finally get some solitude out here. And I think I'm going to make some dinner right now and just enjoy the view and the peace out here. And uh, maybe I'll show you what I'm cooking too. Well, in this big old tub, I've got a bunch of mountain house meals. And a lot of people ask me what I eat when I'm on the road. And usually I like to eat out just because being a photographer, I don't have a lot of time to uh, cook. But on a night like tonight, I got plenty of time. Got some water. So let's see what we got in here. I bought some rice stored the other day. I think I'm going to cook this up with some of this dried chicken. I haven't had this before, but uh, sounds pretty good and saves some money anyway. But here's those mountain house meals I normally have. They've got like spaghetti, mac and cheese, and they're actually really good. Um, I know a lot of you backpacker guys out there definitely um, have had these before, but some people might not have tried them. So if you need some fast, easy food, I definitely recommend those dehydrated meals. Before I got into photography, I was actually an avid hiker and backpacker, so that kind of helps me out. I got a bunch of gear with me, so I'm going to use my jet boil here, and I've already got some water in there, and all I have to do is turn this on, and there we go. And this will allow me to cook water very quickly and easily. Then I could just uh, throw that in my pot, put in my rice, and I'll be good to go.
Well, I added a bit too much water, but uh, overall, looks pretty good. The chicken could have been a bit better, I think, but still, it's a good outdoor meal, and I got a nice view to enjoy it with. Here's a quick behind the scenes look at my little movie theater in my car. You can see I can put my laptop there. And I've got a nice little spot. It's pretty windy tonight and cloudy, so I don't think I'm gonna be able to do any astro. So I guess that means I'm gonna get a good night's sleep for once and uh, hopefully I can get up for sunrise and get some good shots. Anyway, time to watch a movie. Today on Survivor Man, I'm in Southern Utah. And it's among the most mysterious and unexplored regions of the American Southwest. Ancient cultures have survived here and vanished in the breathtaking but brutal canyon land. And I'm going in for seven days alone. I'm up here in the northwestern portion of Arches National Park and there's pretty much nobody out here. It's nice and quiet and I've got this awesome storm brewing overhead. So I think I'm gonna head into the hills here and see if I can get some lightning shots uh, with the rocks in the foreground. So this is the trail up and from everything I've read, this is usually good rattlesnake habitat with all these rocks so definitely a little bit sketched out hiking through here but hopefully they're hunkered down for the day. One of the things I love about this area is that you can see so far away. I don't know if this is gonna focus very well, but way out there, that's Castle Valley. That's where, early in the video I had dinner and there was the uh, afternoon hike in the storm. But uh, it's pretty amazing just how far you can see out here in the desert. I'm on my way to the Great Gallery, and it's a long drive in the middle of nowhere, but all of a sudden there's all these sand dunes. Pretty cool. So I've been in Moab about uh, over two weeks now, and I was actually starting to feel like home, but I had to keep moving. And today I'm here in one of my last spots in Utah. This is Horseshoe Canyon, which is home to 
some of the most amazing uh, rock art in the whole country. So behind me you can see some murals way up there on the cliff wall. That's just the one of uh, at least three I'm going to be headed to today. And I've already walked over some dinosaur footprints that were embedded in the rock. So uh, I'll keep you guys along for the journey and I think we're going to head to Great Gallery next. And this here is what ties everything together. There's this plant here called Datura, and it's all dried up now. But you can see these old seed pods. What the shamans used to do was, in some way or another, ingest the seeds. And uh, at that point, they would essentially go to another dimension. And that's where they encountered the beings you're seeing on these rock walls. So once they got back, the shamans would draw out what they saw. And this plant is almost always growing right where the cave drawings are. Over near Moab, on the cliff walls, there's an Indian writing area turret grows all along there. So this is really uh, the, the bridge between humans and the other dimension, whatever you want to call it. Here we are at the Great Gallery. And it's really spectacular how detailed and intricate these designs are. And after reading the manual they had here, detailing all of the art, it pretty much sums up what I mentioned earlier, where the natives would ingest Datura. The shamans would then go on a journey to other dimensions. They'd come back and they would paint what they saw in these drawings. about does it for this video. Uh, one of the main reasons I even came on this road trip was to come out to Utah and do a lot of astrophotography. So that's what I spent uh, pretty much the past two weeks doing. Uh, the weather didn't really cooperate as much as I would have liked. I figured out in the desert would be clear skies all night, every night, but we had a lot of clouds and a lot of wind, which really hampered my abilities to do the astro I wanted. But in the end, I still got some good shots. So. That was good. And along the way, I started getting more into this rock art. And uh, it's just all over the area. So that was a lot of fun to track all that down. And uh, overall, I had a good time here in Moab. It's starting to feel like home almost. But I'm ready to move on. I'm going to head to California next. And uh, right now, there's a full moon nearly. So I'm going to have to wait another week or two. But then I'll probably head back out in the desert in California and do some more astro. But until then, uh, I'll see you guys, I guess, in California.